Hello there, and welcome to Citizen Academy's Beginner's Guide to Star Citizen. This is part 10 and the final installment of the Beginner's Guide. And for this video, I decided to do something a little bit different. During the past four months, I had been carefully examining the questions on the RSI forms and picking out those that appeared to be the most common questions that beginners to Star Citizen seem to be asking. And I've compiled those into a list of the top 20 questions people ask about Star Citizen. So I'm going to take those one at a time and give detailed answers to each of the questions. Now, these questions are not going to be presented in any order of uh, popularity or importance. I just decided to put them together in a random sequence. So let's get started. Question number one. What do I need to get in order to play Star Citizen right now? I would say this is the most popular question that I see, and that's because a lot of people appear to be confused on what they need to get so they can play the game. So put really simply, you need a ship, which can be bought by itself or as part of a ship package. You need a hangar, which can also be bought all by itself, or you can also buy it as uh, part of a ship package. You also need a character. Now, currently, you cannot get a character as a standalone item. Each ship package includes one character slot. Now, what this means is if you purchase two ship packages, you have, in essence, two characters that you can play within Star Citizen. Now, this is really neat because what you can do is, depending on your mood that day, you can choose one character to play a uh, ruthless pirate. And if you're in a more mellow mood, you can have uh, your second character play the role of a space trucker transporting goods across the galaxy. Now, keep in mind that if you buy a standalone ship or a standalone hangar, you won't have a character. Characters, at least for the time being, are only included if you purchase a ship package. And this is really convenient because most of the ship packages have pretty much everything you need to get started with the game right away. And also, on average, the difference in price between buying like a standalone ship and a ship package, it's only around 10 or $15, I think. So that actually turns out to be a pretty good deal. Now, a big source of confusion arises from the need to also get an alpha module pass. These will cost around $5 each, and I believe most ship packages come with one. And there are also two basic types of uh, module pass. And this leads us on to the very next question. Question number two, what is the difference between an alpha pass and a beta pass? An alpha pass allows you to help test out Star Citizen right now. It also lets you get into the game for a very substantial discount. And by that I mean currently, as of June 2015, around the lowest price you can pay for a ship package is around $30.00. And from what I've read and researched, when the game is released, it's going to cost around $60. So that is like half price if you get into the game right now. And there are going to be four different types of alpha access passes. There is the Arena Commander Pass, which is the space combat one where you fly around and you blow up you know, other people's ships. That's the one that's currently available. There's Star Marine, which is the first-person shooter. That is, I hope, going to be released very, very quickly, like in the next couple of weeks. Please, please. There is a planet side or a social module, which is where you get to walk around on planets and go into stores and um, shop for stuff and socialize and 
with other players and invite them into your hangar and so on. Then there is the Persistent Universe Pass. And that is going to consist of a small handful of planets for you to travel to and explore. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that both the Alpha Access Pass and the Beta Access Pass are there for testing purposes only. Okay, now at this point, we're not even talking about the released Star Citizen game itself. By buying an Alpha Pass, what you are essentially doing is you're becoming an Alpha tester for the game. When you buy a Beta Pass, you're a Beta tester for the game. Now, the Beta testing will come after the Persistent Universe Alpha is released. At that point, Alpha testing will be pretty much done and beta testing will start. That's where the beta access pass comes into play. And this one allows you to help test Star Citizen after the alpha phase of testing is complete. And also allows you to get into the game for the same roughly uh, half price discount. Now the only module that will exist in the beta access pass is the Persistent Universe Beta. And that will consist of many, many more planets to explore. Uh, The economy in place, the government in place, all the various facets of the star system universe will be either in place or being developed rather quickly during the beta access phase. So to quickly summarize, an alpha access pass allows you to get into the game and start helping in testing of Star Citizen right now. The Beta Access Pass allows you to do that later on. And by later on, I'm talking about after the alpha testing phase is complete. Question number three. How do I know which spaceship I should get? Well, this is a very subjective sort of question, actually. I mean, it depends on what do you plan to do within the Star Citizen universe. What sort of occupation are you thinking of? Do you want to be a pirate? Do you want to be a medic? Do you want to be involved in security? Do you want to mine the asteroids? And so on. There will be dozens upon dozens of occupations to choose from. So chances are you're going to find something that will fit your interests really well. Something else to consider is do you prefer playing solo or doing multiplayer? Now, that's another way of saying do you want a ship with a crew of one, namely you, or a ship that allows for multiple crew members so you can play with your friends on your ship. Something else to think about is what is your play style? Uh, Are you more of a peaceful warrior type of a person or more of a ruthless pirate that likes to uh, live on the wrong side of the law? That will determine, to some extent, what type of ship you get. Because some ships, for example, if you want to be a pirate, there are some ships that are going to be designed specifically for the pirate role. And there'll be other ships designed more specifically for other occupations as well. So what's your personality type? That's something to think about. What are your aesthetic tastes like? Each manufacturer of spaceships has their own particular style of design, just like car manufacturers have today. Of course, an important question to ask is, how fat is your wallet? Now, a lot of the ships in Star Citizen are around $30, $45. There's a whole mess of ships in that price range. But a lot of them, in particular the larger ships, those can go for you know, $200, 300 upwards to $400 just for one ship. So how much money you're willing to fork over is a very important consideration. Now, there are two things to keep in mind when you're selecting your very first ship. Many ships can perform multiple roles. For example, the Aurora line of ships. They are basically a jack-of-all-trades style of ship. There are around four or five different styles of ship in that line that serve 
a wide variety of functions. Also, keep in mind that the spaceships in Star Citizen can be customized to a great extent. So when you're on the RSI website looking at ships and you look at the specifications, and let's say one or two of the items, like for example the engines are a little bit weaker than you would prefer, or the shields aren't quite what you want, don't let that dissuade you from buying that ship because when the game is launched, in all likelihood, you will be able to upgrade those components to the exact specifications you want. Question number four. How do I know which phase of development ships are in? Now, this relates to question number three in that only ships in a certain stage of development can be purchased off the RSI website. But let's say there's a ship that you really had your eyes on, but you go onto the website and it's not for sale, at least not yet. Well, how do you know when it might be on sale? Well, there is a way to determine what phase of development a spaceship is in. If you go into Google and enter within quotation marks, unofficial Star Citizen Ship Progress Chart. Don't forget to include the quotation marks. The uh, first or second or third search result will link to a online uh, spreadsheet that is being updated on a roughly a weekly basis to keep people up to speed on the development of all the ships in Star Citizen. And here is a picture of what it looks like right now. Now, if you notice along the top there, it says concept ready, hangar ready, and dogfight ready. Concept ready means that the ship is still in its early design phases, which is another way of saying you cannot buy it yet unless it's on a early concept sale, but those usually only last around a week to 10 days, and then they're taken off sale. Hangar ready means that that particular ship can be parked in your hangar. You can walk around in it. You can go into the cockpit. You can walk around the cargo bay, but you can't fly it yet. Dogfight ready means that you can now fly the ship within Arena Commander and blow up all the other ships. So this is a really handy way of seeing where a ship that you are interested in is in the development cycle. So you can get a rough idea of is it going to be a long way from being put on sale again or is it going to be put on sale really, really quickly? This spreadsheet will give you that information. Really, really cool stuff. Question number five. I see this a lot on the RSI forums. And the question basically comes to, all right, I bought myself a ship, but I still can't play the game. What the heck is going on? And it usually comes down to, did you get a ship or a ship package? A standalone ship will not get you into the game. A ship with an alpha pass gets you into the game, as I described in uh, it's question number two or question number three. I forgot. Anyway, so you need to get some kind of an alpha pass and each alpha pass cost $5. Now, there are four types of alpha passes. There's the Arena Commander Pass, which is what everybody is playing right now. There's a Star Marine Pass, the Planet Side Pass, and a Persistent Universe Pass. Those are currently not available. And by currently, again, I mean um, early June 2015. The Star Marine Pass, I hope, will be available in a couple of weeks. But we'll just have to see how that goes. So let me go over this again really quick because this is a question that really, really confuses a lot of people new to Star Citizen. Let's say, for example, you buy a standalone ship for $30. Okay, that ship is going to come with a hangar. Now, you can buy hangers separately, but if you buy a standalone ship, it's going to come with a hangar. So other than that, what you would need is an alpha pass. In this case, uh, for the Arena Commander module, that's going to cost you $5. So to get into the game, going this route, it's going to cost you $35. And that's it. 
if you get a ship package, it's going to cost you around $10 to $15 more than if you just get a single ship. But that will come with the Alpha Pass and loads and loads of other goodies that you're going to want to have. So you might as well just buy a ship package. So in summary, the key is you need some kind of an Alpha Pass in order to get into the game right now. Question number six. Why can't I fly a ship that I own within Arena Commander? Seems like a very reasonable question. You bought the ship. It's in your hangar. Why can't you fly it? Well, what stage of development is the ship in? Oftentimes, people will buy a ship during a concept sale, which is basically CIG putting a ship up for sale that has been fairly well designed, fairly well fleshed out as far as the design of the ship. And it's at a stage where they can put it out there and show people what the ship looks like. And if they want to, they can get the ship during what's called a concept sale. So the ship isn't actually done, but it is done to the point where players can get an idea of what the ship is all about. So ships that are in very early development cannot be flown yet. Only fly-ready ships are flyable within Arena Commander. And again, I refer you back to that ship chart that I mentioned earlier in order to determine which ships are in what stage of development. Question number seven. Why aren't my UEC credits showing up in my account? Okay, let me briefly just explain what that means. When you get a ship package, each ship package comes with a small quantity of United Earth credits. This is the in-game currency. And it's usually 5,000 UEC credits, uh, 10,000, maybe even 15,000 credits. And those are used to purchase items within the Star Citizen game. Now, here's a picture of my account. And as you can see, I have a number of UEC credits. Oftentimes, a person will buy a ship package, go on to their account, and that number will be zero credits. The reason for that is that CIG wants to make sure that the in-game economic system is as stable as possible. Okay, they want to limit the... Um, currency, supply, and demand until the game is actually launched. Now, I'm not going to get into a long lecture on economic theory, but um, trust me, it all makes sense. Now, you can, however, purchase UEC credits on the RSI website, and the current rate of exchange is 1,000 UEC for one US dollar. And that's why you see that number on my account. I've been purchasing UEC credits. I'm buying stuff in the online store, even though none of the credits for my ship packages have even shown up yet. Question number eight. Where the heck is all that stuff that was included in my ship package? Another very popular question. Now, on top of a ship being available in the ship package, naturally. You get a hanger, you get the, your character, but there's lots of other stuff that is included in various packages, like insurance for your ship, like I mentioned before, some UEC credits, uh, a digital star map, the game soundtrack, loads and loads of other stuff. Now, the thing is, some of the items included in ship packages will only be made available after Star Citizen is released. And the simple reason for that is lots of these things simply don't exist yet. So you can think of these as pre-ordered items contained within your ship package that you will get once Star Citizen is launched. Oh, also, notice that little footnote down there. Not all ship packages include all of these items. In fact, this is just a little sample of the goodies that are available in various ship packages. Question number nine. I bought something at the pledge store, but I never got it. This relates to the previous question in that a few of the items in the pledge store have not been developed yet, but are still available for pre-order. 
for example, here's a little screenshot of the pledge store. The engineering manual for modders, for example, that is not available yet, nor is the Star Citizen soundtrack. So sometimes when you buy something in the pledge store, it won't show up on your account because it, well, doesn't exist yet. Question number 10. That loading screen for the game appears to be stuck. What is going on? Here's a screenshot of the loading screen, just so you know what I'm talking about. Now, Star Citizen can take a while to load properly. I mean, Star Citizen is a big, gargantuan game. It is currently around 22 gigabytes in size. Rumors have it that when the game is launched, it's going to be at least 100 gigabytes in size. Anyway, it's going to take a while to load. So be patient. Don't worry. Your computer did not crash. The game did not crash. It takes a while to load. The length of time it's going to take to load depends to a large extent upon how robust your computer is. I did a uh, just a little cursory bit of research on this topic on the RSI forms. And according to my data... On really slow computers, it might take 45 minutes for the loading screen to get all finished. On super fast computers, maybe a minute, minute and a half. Now keep in mind that Star Citizen is still in very early development. As Star Citizen is further developed, I'm sure that the loading times are going to be reduced. Uh, Once the game is launched, all the code for the game is going to be optimized, so it's going to be much, much faster even then. So don't worry, be patient. Question number 11. Will there be leveling in Star Citizen? And by this I mean a system by which players earn experience points, which enable them to perform more advanced tasks, get better weapons, uh, improve their skills, and so on. Well, sort of but not really. I mean, not in the traditional sense. As I mentioned before, there is going to be a in-game currency, and this can be used to purchase better weapons, get better ships, more advanced components for your ships, better armor, that sort of thing. So in a kind of a way, you can think of that as a kind of leveling, but not really. And the reason I say this is because Star Citizen is, above anything else, a game of personal skill. For example, you're not going to be able to become a better pilot simply by earning more points in doing some other sort of task. The only way you're going to become a a better pilot is by getting out there and flying around in space and getting lots of practice. Question number 12. How will I earn money to buy stuff in the game? Well, there's going to be a very dynamic and very realistic economy within Star Citizen. And the economy is going to be based, in general, upon supply and demand. Now, you as a player can take on various job contracts from private individuals or from something called the Trade Development Division. And here is a picture of an office of the TDD, just so you can see how impressive it looks. Uh, this is a place where you go to to find jobs that you might want to do for other people to earn in-game currency. Now, you can also co- approach it from the other side. You can put out contracts for jobs that you want done by other players. And something to keep in mind is that there is going to be competition for the same contracts in some situations. For example, if a factory wants uh, half a million units of a certain kind of ore to be uh, brought to their factory, and you take on that contract, there might be three or four other players out there who have also taken on that contract. So if you have one other player who has also accepted that contract, and that player brings back half of what the factory wanted, and you bring back the second half, each of you will be paid 
based on the percentage of the contract that you fulfilled. So you would only get half of the normal pay in UEC credits. The other person would get the other half. Question number 13. Which hanger should I get? Well, currently there is no functional difference between the four hangers that are currently available. In general, it all comes down to your personal taste for, I guess, uh, interior design. Now, where your hanger is based in the Star Citizen universe when you start the game depends to some extent upon which one you get. For example, the Revel and York hanger is a very modern, expensive-looking hanger. You're not going to find that hanger on a newly established colony on a planet that's just trying to get itself established. You're going to find that sort of hanger in very much established planets and cities like Earth or Centauri, you know, places that have been colonized for hundreds of years. Also, to a certain extent, the kind of hanger you get may depend upon what occupation you decide to choose from. For example, if you want to be a pirate, an asteroid hanger may be more appropriate for you because those hangers are out there in the asteroid belt and oftentimes in the far fringes of known space, far away from the United Empire of Earth government and security forces. Question number 14. Will there be millions of planets for us to go to? Well, no, at least not when Star Citizen is first released. When the Persistent Universe Alpha is launched, there will be just a few planets, and this will be sometime around the end of 2015, early 2016. That's the latest projected release date for that. And all of 2016 will be spent developing dozens more planets. Now, what's really cool about Star Citizen is that each planet is going to be very distinct from every other planet. They're going to have their own style of architecture, their own unique ecosystems, their own unique life forms, their own uh, unique geological features, and so on. Now, CIG is working on a way to create procedurally generated planets and other environments. And I'm not going to go into the uh, computer lingo details of how this works, but basically a procedurally generated environment is generated by an algorithm, usually based upon a seed number for that in environment. This is opposed to having the environment pre-built by the programmers. And if that sounds confusing to you, uh, go into Wikipedia and look up procedural generation and it will explain things better than I can because that's a little bit above my head. Now once Star Citizen has procedurally generated planets that will allow for zillions upon zillions of planets all across the Star Citizen universe and that is going to be freaking awesome. Question number 15. Speaking of planets can I explore worlds like hop out of my ship and run around and explore and go wherever I want? Well, at first, you will not be able to freely explore the entire surface of a planet. There will be specific locations like big cities where you can walk around and explore, go into shops, go into bars, that sort of thing. In the future, players will be able to explore planets to a far greater extent, presumably when the procedurally generated planets come online. But that's not going to be for quite some time. Question number 16. Will it be possible to craft items like in Minecraft? And here's a little screenshot from Minecraft that shows how you can assemble various parts and have it uh, create some other more advanced part. Well, you can't craft items exactly like that in Star Citizen. In fact, the only extent to which you can craft things would be that you can fine-tune components on your spaceship. Or maybe if you discover some sort of advanced alien technology, that would alter how a component operates on your ship. Uh, it might be possible to influence the production of items, like within a local star system. But that is really the extent to which any kind of crafting might take place within Star Citizen. So basically, 
Not really that much. Question number 17. Now, this relates to the RSI website. What is the difference between a community moniker and my handle name? And here is a screenshot of what I'm talking about. So here is my community moniker, and here is my handle name. So a community moniker is your main identity on the RSI website. The thing about this name is that other people on the website can also have that same name. Your handle name is unique, however, and this is what differentiates uh, your name from any moniker duplicates. I know that may sound kind of confusing, but this is generally it's an artifact from when the RSI was on a um, old um, system and was ported over to the current version of the online form software that didn't allow any kind of duplication of names. So they had to either force everybody to change their names or add on a secondary handle name to make sure that all names were unique. So they decided, rather than burden the players, they decided to just add on the handle name on top of the community moniker name. Question number 18. What are those little icons by everybody's name on the RSI website? And again, here is a screenshot, and here are those icons that I am referring to in this question. Now, that first icon indicates how much a person has contributed toward the development of Star Citizen. And there are various, uh, I think they're called pledge badges. And here's a screenshot of what all of those look like. So the more you have contributed, the higher the rank you, you can have. However, higher ranked players will not be granted any distinct advantage over other players within Star Citizen. It's more of a um, bragging rights award for your generosity toward contributing to Star Citizen. And that's basically it. Now that second icon indicates if a person is a subscriber or not. And this is a monthly subscription service you can get on the RSI website that gives you lots of uh, additional sort of background information on the development of Star Citizen, various uh, artwork that's been developed that only subscribers can see, and so on. The third icon there indicates the primary organization a player belongs to, if they belong to anything. And a organization is basically a group of people that share a common interest in Star Citizen that basically play the game together as a large team. Question number 19. What is ship melting and what is a ship upgrade and a CCU? Right, this is the source of also much confusion. Melting is a process of trading in a ship that you own for in-store credits, presumably to buy some other ship in the future. Now, a very, very important thing to consider is that if you melt the only ship package you own that came with alpha access, you will no longer have that alpha access. So what other ship you buy to replace the one you melted, you're either going to have to buy that ship in a package that again has the alpha access or buy the alpha access as a separate item for $5. A ship upgrade is an upgrade within the same design of ship. Now here is a screenshot that shows all the different ship upgrades you can get. A modern example of this would be trading in your Ford F-150 for a Ford F-350. A cross-chassis upgrade is an upgrade to a different design of ship. And again, here is a screenshot showing all the different cross-chassis upgrades you can get. And again, a modern example of this would be uh, trading in a Ford truck for a Chevy truck, for example. And so we come to the final question. Question number 20. When I get myself a ship, do I need to start paying insurance on it right now? Well, the answer to that is no. Payment of insurance only starts upon the release of Star Citizen. Now, at the moment, 
you can't even lose your ship in the first place because when you're flying around in Arena Commander, keep in mind that is a flight simulator. You're not actually flying your ship that you bought that's sitting there parked in your hangar. So it's not a real ship, so you can't lose it. You will also notice that each ship package comes with a little bit of insurance for that ship. In fact, here is a little screenshot that uh, shows a cutlass, and there you can see it comes with a little bit of insurance. So let's say you bought a ship, and it comes with three months of insurance. On the day Star Citizen begins, you will have, from that point, three months of insurance for your ship. After the three months has elapsed, then you will have to start to pay for insurance on your ship. The insurance that comes with your package is just a little bit just to sort of get you started. Now, don't be really concerned about the cost of insurance. Ship insurance is going to be a very, very small expense for your ship. It's going to be trivial. So don't worry about how much it's going to cost. It's not going to be very much at all. However, if your ship gets blown to smithereens in some space battle and you are foolish enough to leave your hangar with a ship that had no insurance on it, tough luck, kiddo. You should have known better. That ship is gone. And so there you have it. The top 20 Star Citizen questions based on my research on the RSI online forums. If there is anything you would like to say about this video, please leave me a comment. I really enjoy checking the comments in my videos, and I am an active participant. I answer all my viewers' questions, oftentimes within a couple hours after they've posted their question. And if you really want to show support for my Star Citizen channel, please click on that little red subscribe button below. Uh, until next time... This is Citizen Academy, wishing all of you fame and fortune in the verse.